there'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes to gather his loved ones home. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes to gather his loved ones home to gather his loved ones home to gather his loved ones home there'll be no death ready when jesus comes to gather his loved ones home to gather his loved ones home, to gather his loved ones home. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes to gather his loved ones home. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes. There'll be no death ready when Jesus comes to gather his loved ones home, to gather his loved ones home, to gather his loved ones home. There'll be no death rally when Jesus comes to gather his loved ones home to gather his loved ones home. There'll be no death ready back home. A wonder. serve him the rest of my days i will sing praises and honor and glory be given to him Yes. 
simulo e a conferiwa mi guia sogoza en crise ni a mi guita ta con que gibege es ya veniza co guita ta con que gibege es ya veniza co I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I, I see that people are not yet sure where they are. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, probably, let's try it in a different language. Uh, but I pray that you, you don't laugh as I'm trying. Mungu ni muema. Yeah, I know. Let's try it again. Mungu ni muema. Noa, eh, yeah. Noa masilimai kwa jina la Jesu mukuzi wetu. At least, at least I've tried. I think I, I, I have tried. So far, my, my vocabulary begins and ends here. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to see all of you. Actually, I've been praying to come here. When the invitation came, I had other appointments and commitments, but we prayed with the Dr. Kisis, and the Lord has been kind that he has allowed us to come and stand here to share the word of God. Uh, I'm also happy. I see my countrymen being happy. Uh, with a lot of noise in the name of Jesus. Um, I, I, I'm happy it, it shows that you guys are, are keeping them alive and happy. I'm really, really blessed to be in your presence. Now, let me say to all of us that God would have called a better preacher to come. I'm standing here not because I'm better, but I stand here because of Jesus. If you forget everything that I would say this evening, at least don't forget Jesus. Amen. Ellen White writes uh, that God does not call those who are qualified, but he qualifies those he calls. So I stand here as your servant to share the word of God with you. So that I don't waste a lot of your time, time is gone. Allow me this, this evening this evening 
to go to the book of Luke chapter 7. The book of Luke chapter 7. Now, let me see those who brought their Bibles to church. Let me see your Bibles. I, I, I challenge you to I challenge you to bring your Bibles to church, isn't it? Uh, the size of your Bible determines the size of your faith, isn't it? The bigger, uh, the, bigger the Bible, uh, the bigger the faith. Luke chapter 7. Let us read from verse 11. There's a narrative from Luke chapter 7, from verse 11. Because I'm cognizant as to where I am preaching. I would not get too much into the background of the book of Luke but I'll give you the summary of the book of Luke, then I get into the message. It, it is proper that when one preaches, one would allow himself to get into the classroom, and from the classroom we end with the pulpit. So for, for that moment, I would love us to, to, to just go to the book of Luke, in chapter 7 from verse 11. The Bible reads as follows, Now it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nine. And many of his disciples went with him and a large crowd. When he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said, Do not weep. He came and he touched the open coffin. And those who carried him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. Then the fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has arisen amongst us. God has visited his people. Let us pray. Our Lord and our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We pray that you speak to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Amen. Now, the book, of, the book of Luke and the book of Acts are, are books that have been written by one writer called Dr. Luke. When you read the book of Luke, it is good that you read the book of Luke with the finger in the book of Acts. Luke is written for, uh, uh, the book of Luke is written for a man by Luke. He's writing to a man called Theophilus. When he speaks to Theophilus, he says, I write unto you, O most excellent Theophilus, that you might know the certainty of these things. The identity of Theophilus is not known, but what we know is that Theophilus could have been a Roman governor. Now, when Luke writes, he is not writing like John. When John starts his gospel, he does not trace Jesus from earth. Because when John writes, he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and that life was the light of man. Verse 14 says, and the Word became flesh. Now, assuming, saying to us, the Word became flesh, Jesus, when he became man, he became what he was not before. But when you look into the book of Luke, it is a historical book. History, according to Luke, is his story. There is no history without his story. And Luke, it is the only writer who records Jesus to say, before Abraham was, I was. Jesus, Luke is trying to prove to us, he is saying to us, now before Abraham was, I was. Therefore, it means Abraham is older than Jesus in time, and Jesus is older than Abraham in eternity. So he, 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 is, he is writing to this man, and Luke is the doctor. Now, when you get to chapter 7, he deals with an interesting story. The city, we only know about the city. There are two things we know about the city. Is that, number one, it is an insignificant city that is in the center of two prominent cities. The neighbors of Nine is a city called the city of Edo and the city of Shunem. 
Bible students will remember that the city of Edo is where, where, where God had rejected Saul. Saul went to a, a, a Sangoma or a witch and went and consulted. Now, when you look into the book of, when you look into the city of Shunem, the city of Shunem is made famous by a nameless woman that is called the Shunamite woman that had a son that died but was resurrected by Elisha. But now what is interesting about these this cities is that these cities, they buried in one graveyard and the graveyard was outside the city gate. I want you to put your finger outside the city gate. Outside the city gate is very important. The Bible does not tell us the name of this woman, but it tells us two things about this woman. Number one, that she had lost her only son, and number two is that she was a widow. I want to ask you a question. What do you do when your dreams die or they fail you? You remember in the olden days, women were not supposed to work Men would go to work and work for their wives. Now, when the husband died, the hope of that woman was pinned on her son, but her only hope died as well. What do you do when that which you have trusted so much dies and fails you? What do you do when you come to, to Baraton in, in, in this university, someone has promised to pay your fees, and when you reach campus, that person loses his job? What do you do when you've got a parent that teaches you, that gives you money to to go to school, but as soon as you come to school, you get a message that she has died. What do you do when your only hope fails you? I want us to understand this. The graveyard was outside the city gate. If the graveyard is outside the city gate and she is a widow, it means it is not the first time for her to pass by the city gate. The first time she passed there, she was burying her husband. But the difference is that when she buried the husband, there was no one by the gate. Now, I, I want us to understand this outside the city gate. Now, now in Israel, when someone was caught and was tried in the courts of laws and he was found guilty to be, to be stoned to death, they would not stone that person inside the city gate, but they would stone that person outside the city gate. When that young man was sick, there was a court case between life and death, and the verdict was that death was defeated, but the defeat of death could not be experienced in the city, but it could be experienced outside the city gate. The Bible says these guys are living to bury a dead person. Watch this. They are carrying a dead person. The Bible says as they go towards the graveyard, there are two groups of crowds. One is carrying a dead man and one is walking with life. Two groups coming from Capernaum and one coming from nine. Ellen White says in the book Desire of Ages, in Christ Jesus is life original and borrowed and underived, meaning that as Jesus walks with them, he is walking with them, little did they know that their lives are dependent on the one they are walking with. Hence one scholar says, when, when Mary played with Jesus, when Jesus was a, a small boy, when he kissed Jesus, she did not know that she was kissing the face of God. Mary did not know that when she was carrying Jesus, when the Pharisees were saying that she is pregnant out of wedlock, little did they know that their power to speak was given by that which was carried by Mary. So these groups are two. They are going to the graveyard. One is carrying death and one is walking with life. When they get into the gate of the city, that's where the sermon is. At the gate of the city, the Bible says there was a crowd, but Jesus does not see a crowd. He sees the woman. You can come here to church this evening. You are hurt and you are crying. You are thinking about your future. No one knows what will happen. Now as you are crying, you think that people do not see, but there is a Jesus who sees what the crowd can, cannot see. The Bible says when Jesus saw her, he had compassion on her. Watch this, brethren. Watch this. The Bible says Jesus goes to the coffin. 
Now, in Israel, when one touches the dead body, he becomes unclean. But only Jesus can touch the unclean and remain clean. He touches the, the dead man. He says, young man, I say arise. Watch this. The Bible says, he who was dead, sit up. And the Bible does not stop there. It says he began to speak. Now, it means there was a meeting between two only sons. The only son of the mother was meeting the only son of the father. The son of the mother. The son of the mother has death in him, but the son of the father has life in him. He does not need to be dependent on anything to live. He lives in spite of us, in spite of anything. He is life original. And the Bible says he does not stop there. The Bible says he holds him by hand. He presents him to his mother. That's what we call restoration. Only Jesus can restore your broken dreams. Only Jesus can do things that you will never think that passing people can do. Now, I want you, I don't know in, 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 in East Africa, but in the southern part of Africa, when people are dead, mothers of the community will come and cook. Even in the ancient Near East, people, when they prepared for funeral, they will go and cook. Imagine the women of nine coming together discussing a menu the menu is supposed to be for the funeral but little did they know that the menu was not for the funeral but it was for the after tears when they have met jesus now imagine with me that when they left the house they were carrying a dead man but when they came back he who was dead is now walking on his own foot. Now, in Africa, because we are afraid of, of ghosts, I, I, I imagine people running away because they do not believe what they are saying. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, when Jesus is done with you, people will run away. Now, now I, I remember when I got to Solusi, Pastor, I want to close this. When I got to Solusi, I was never good with maths, but I was good in Greek. I was told that I'm going to do maths. When I passed high school, I celebrated. I said, no more maths. No more maths. I get to Solusi. They say maths and accounting. And I went to the dean and said, Pastor Dean said, I came here to be a pastor to read verses, <laughs> not to be a mathematics person. The pastor answered and said, Pastor, in the Bible there is a book of numbers. Therefore, God is interested in numbers. I remember writing the first test. It was out of 50. I was able to get to 12 in the name of Jesus. I failed the test. But I want you to watch this. When people did not think I would pass and graduate, God helped me to graduate in record time. Not because I was clever, but because when he is done with you, you would not know. When I went to Solusi, I was just a Soweto boy. But when Jesus is done with you, you will sit even in meetings that you never thought you would sit in. You don't need to do anything. Allow God to be God, then you take your position. The Bible says, when Jesus came close to the gate of the city, he saw the tears of the mother who had lost her only son. What is it that you have lost? This week, I came here to tell you about a restoring Jesus. A Jesus who restores dreams. And a Jesus who can do for you that which you can never do for yourself. As we close, we close with the doxology by Paul. He says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, 
above that which you can think or imagine with the power that is at work in you. Do you know what that means? It means that divinity does not do what humanity can do. When humanity can do, divinity gets, gives you a chance so that you can do it your own way. I've seen people at school, universities, who will not study, and they pray in the name of Jesus, and they still fail in the name of Jesus. Why? This verse says, unto him who is able to do exceedingly. You see, what God is about to do in your life has never been witnessed. I normally tell people, God does not deal with renovations. He does new things. If you want to be renovated, good for you. We don't want renovations, but we want a new life. A woman who cried, left home crying, but when she got into a house, by the end of the day, she was celebrating. God is about to give you a story. Would you allow Jesus to take care of your life? <clears throat> Let us pray. Father in heaven, your word has mesmerized us this evening. That you can meet us at our point of need. That in such a large crowd, you can still identify us with our individual needs. We thank you because you are the answer. May you be the answer to all our questions and troubles today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you.